right, all right, all right. You got Robin Lynn keeping the Vibes Live, just like the song says. With another Vibes Live exclusive, we have in the house tonight, Linda D. Watley, author of Soldier with a Backpack, Living and Dying Simultaneously, PTSD, The Hidden Love Killer. Linda is a published writer who began her first work of art with poetry. The poem, I Wish, appeared in the Poetry Gym of the American Poet Society. For over 12 years, she had had her own religious philosophical column in the Frost Illustrated newspaper titled, The Best Will Show Themselves. Linda has appeared as a contributed contributing writer for the online magazines including Faith Writers, The Right Side of Me Productions, The Blessed Room, and Cheers, where she shared inspirational and thought-provoking messengers, messages to readers. She is also a, contributing, a contributor of anthologies, The Triumph of My Soul, edited by Elissa Gabriel, and This Far by Faith with Vanessa Miller as editor. Yes, and today she, today God has awakened her to a new and extremely important message to share with the world. We must become more conscious of PTSD, that's post-traumatic stress disorder. She is presenting her newest work, Soldier with a Backpack, Living and Dying Simultaneously. This work reveals the reality of the impact this disorder has on our veterans and civilian people's lives. All right, we're going to go right on into it right now. There's so much to talk about. Linda, are you with me? Yes, I am. Welcome. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, with welcome, welcome, welcome. And I really personally want to thank you for your work in this book because I'm a veteran and I... Uh, have been diagnosed with post-traumatic distress disorder myself, and so I'm glad that you're here to talk about it today. So thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's just go right on into it now. A soldier with a backpack. Let's just start right there. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. And you want to know what that backpack is? Yeah, what's the backpack about? I have a personal idea that I'd like to share, but you first. <laughs> that the backpack consists of the unseen aspects of ourselves, that part of ourselves that we very seldom pay attention to or we neglect or it's a part of us that we don't understand. It's our history, it's our soul, it's our spirit, everything I've seen about us. Um, our relationship with God is in there, mm -hmm. our relationship with people, how we handle life and how we um, hide a lot of things mm -hmm. and how we place things and we don't face things. It's just an invisible aspect of ourselves. Wow. Wow. Now, uh, um, uh, are, you're, are you a veteran? Yes. Yes, I did three years in the Army. Yeah. Okay. When I first got out of high school, I went into service. Okay, yes, yeah, so did I. I was actually, I went in when I was 17, actually, before I got <laughs> out of high school. Uh-huh. So... We were just babies. <laughs> yep, yeah. So when you say living and dying simultaneously, well, first of all, let's get into uh, a little bit more... Um, about PTSD. Can you can you explain to us what that is? So, you know, basically, I try to explain it to how I see it because mm -hmm. the way the world sees things, it's like, to me, it's like limited to the whole concept of it. Yes. To me, post-traumatic stress disorder is reaction of trauma, stress, yes. pressure, um, pain, it's, it's that inside damage, that inside absorption. And to me, post-traumatic stress disorder is just like the wound, you know, the illness, um, the diagnosis of mm -hmm. pain that you don't see. Because when you get cut, you can see that. Yes. You can, you can get stitches in that. But when your inside is damaged, you are alone. Yes. 
Yes. People are not going to come in there and give you a Band-Aid or give you an embrace or give you understanding. It's like it comes down to God and you big time because uh-huh. on the outside, people are thinking, well, what's wrong with, what's wrong with her? You know, uh-huh. and you know, time, time that went by, she should be all right now. But yes. it's an de- a inside damage mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically to the brain. Yes, people. You know, it's like the whole fold. People, people hear the word stress and and then they go oh well you know what get over it or don't let it get to you like that okay (laughs) it is like yeah well it's i'm not letting it get to me and if if i could then i wouldn't have post-traumatic stress disorder you know right and it's like the invisible see people don't want to get into the unseen aspect of themselves that's why it's difficult Mm -hmm. for them to conceive you know the damages because they're used to physical damages to tell you the extent of the injury or the problem. Mm-hmm. But when and when you are damaged on the inside, mm-hmm. where your emotions and your mental and your spiritual and your soul, when it's not all connected, balanced, and naturally, it's a great trauma going on within mm-hmm. that you. And it's always so brand new. That's what people understand. It don't get old. It gets brand new every day. You have to always position something that people don't see. You know, you always have to be aware of when to silence yourself or when to speak and when to get things done because every day it's almost like a brand new day because something you have dealt with that people don't even know when they're looking at you that you're dealing with it. I've often, you know? I've often felt that um, everything was an assault on my senses. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that part of yourself is like, it's so powerful. That's what people don't understand. It mm-hmm. has to be powerful if you think about it. When mm-hmm. we leave this world, this physical aspect of ourselves, everybody can look at it for days. But what you take with you, nobody sees. But it has to be powerful because it goes with you. So the whole aspect of it is getting to know how to move around within yourself. You know, just being conscious of the energy vibrations. I mean, there's so many different levels and dimensions mm-hmm. and aspects. It's almost like a universe mm-hmm. inside of yourself. And mm-hmm. just like they say, when it, when things go on in the heavens and the stars and the galaxies, it can have a end of the world effect. You know, so when you look at what we deal with on a regular basis, it is so tremendous. It's bigger than us all the time. Yeah. You know, because... I mean, it's alive. It's not playing with us at all. You know, I, I, I right now, I, I, I have a vision of of the sky, and the the sky has the stars, the planets, all the sun, all these elements in in it moving at a constant rate at a high speed, and they never collide into each other, and and. I liken that to uh, 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 PTSD, living with PTSD. <laughs> well, that, that's a good, a good <laughs> example because mm-hmm. it is really, I mean, it's like you are really forced to be whole. Mm-hmm. You know, for so long, especially the younger you are, you're so physical. You don't even have to take thought about anything. Mm-hmm. But it's like you have to be so aware of your energy on the inside mm-hmm. and it's the forces and the gentleness. I mean, it's not a monster, though. Mm-hmm. That's the thing about it. See, people making it seem like such a horrific monster, but it's just something that you have to organize and be conscious of mm-hmm. and learn how to communicate and you know, disassemble, reassemble. You just have to know it. You have to. It's just. It's just not going to be denied of its existence. That it's been traumatized. It's not going to let you think that it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. It's letting you know that this world has really done something that's not really what God would have done to you. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, from the standpoint that under normal circumstances you would have to face this, but because of the harshness of the world, you know that you're dealing with it on unnecessary levels and scales and mm-hmm. experiences, you know, but if everybody would just take time out to be kind people, mm-hmm. it can make such a huge difference because we're dealing with inner vibrations plus vibrations outside of ourselves. We have to have conscious awareness of what's going on inside of us just to deal with that alone. 
mm-hmm. you know, like a road race. They're coming up with so many psychological issues because people are choosing to not be gentle, spiritual people. They're choosing to be too physical, too driven by forces that's not really benefiting mankind yeah. as a whole. And in the military, we're actually trained to fight and be on the offense on the offensive and i um i figured it out even while i was in still in the active duty okay they they you know how they'll they'll have uh guard dogs or attack right. dogs and they will put them on command sick them go get them and then when that when that when the um, assignment is completed, okay, they'll say, down boy, they'll take them off command, okay? Right. Well, when we go in the military, they train us for to do our, our jobs, to fight, combat, so many things. But then they never take us off command, mm-hmm. okay? So we, we come back in garrison from if we've been out in the field or, or over overseas or over in combat we come back we get out of the military and we're let loose in society like that on command mm-hmm wow mm-hmm yeah you know like like my son he would say it was so much easier for him when he was in iraq for one thing they knew exactly what they had to do they was with people they, they could trust mm-hmm. they was not alone they was bonded, you know, it mm-hmm. was like civilized among themselves. Mm-hmm. But then when they come back to the United States, they find so much division, so much domestic violence, so much mm-hmm. murdering and killing and unlovelessness, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like going from a war zone to a war zone. Yeah. And so it's never and no time for them to even balance <laughs> out by nature. And, we're, and we, there's no way that we could because we're still on command trained exactly. to react to areas like that. And, but... When we come back to civilization, we're not authorized, you know, or supposed to do that. So it's like, what do you do with all that? Where do you put it? Okay. And another thing is that um, people who suffer uh, traumas, um, uh, it's very common to lose the ability to feel pain and or other sensations. This is a, also the big reason why it's very, very difficult um, to cope with. Um, I know that I've been in cer- certain situations where things have happened, you know, like maybe with a family member or something like really major and serious, and, and it could have traumatized me or affected me in such a, a way that I just immediately went numb. And I and I get non-responsive, can get non-responsive, and it can look like I don't care, you know, and that's uh, that can be a really big problem if people don't understand that. And I've I also find that sometimes even though we are able to explain, which is very difficult to do that, but sometimes on the other end, getting people to understand exactly what you're saying to them. What do you mean you don't feel that? What do you mean? You can't respond, you know, what's, you know, and so it can be really, it's, I really love it when you say living and dying simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what we do. It's like people have no idea, like for me, how brand new each day is. It's uh-huh. like brand new. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like just keep it moving type of mentality. It's like. You do what you have to do to keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Some, and sometimes that means alienation. Sometimes that means silence. Because sometimes people say, well, they won't talk. Well, sometimes people don't realize you're not talking because it's really to your benefit that I don't. Mm-hmm. And they think that you're being isolated or, you know, not socializing, but you're actually looking out for them. But mm-hmm. they don't understand that that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, and then there's days that you get a, some break in that day's time you get a break you might go days and you get some breaks but there's always something that you had to place like just like something as simple as saying you know 
I'm getting ready to go to the store and I'm yes. going to stop by. Just like, for example, I'm going to pick up something, you know, I'm going to stop by my mom's house. My mind is triggered to get that done. And then all of a sudden, she realized <laughs> that I'm picking up my order and then she said, well, bring me some ice cream. It was like, you have to completely, you have to completely shift gears, readjust. And I have, um, um, I remember a time <laughs> I went to the store and I got to the point where it was a lot, um, um, you know, all the motion and commotion. It was just too much for me. So I would wait until late at night to go to the store, grocery shopping. And I went to the grocery store and they were remodeling. Okay. So I went to the, to the part of the store to get whatever it was I was going to go get. And it wasn't there. And, <laughs> and I couldn't think to just ask the clerk, you know, hey, where it was. Yeah. I had to go all the way home and regroup. I mean, it just kind of threw me off. I've been with people who are also like, it, I go in McDonald's and it doesn't matter. I eat the same thing every time I go in there, okay? But if you ask me, what do you want, then I have to look at the menu, <laughs> Read the menu. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, a process that that I have right. to go through, and I actually have to allow myself that process. You know, and I know it could drive some people crazy, but um, once I once I figured it out for myself, um, that that's when I began to be to be able to function a lot more. Right. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. And, so, and sometimes it's easier than other times, and sometimes it's not even anything you have to think about. And sometimes, like you almost forget that you have to be conscious of what you're doing and yeah. saying, and you get comfortable, and then all of a sudden you're reminded, "Oh yeah, right." Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh like boy. Like just every day is so inwardly, it's just so amazingly different. You know it, how it's handled. It, it is like. Some might be like, remember me? You, you didn't deal with me a couple of weeks ago, but I really want your attention. How are you going to handle this? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. You know. And it's, uh, and it's, it's, it's amazing because you, you, you have all kind of uh, therapists and psychologists and so-called experts, but really, um, no one really can be an expert on this because it's 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 Not in each perfect, person yeah. it takes on its own shape and form and and what i found in dealing with uh the doctors is that um i i'm highly aware of what's going on with me and i can i can express it very well without turning the tables over and losing my temper and and getting frustrated okay except that i end up getting frustrated because the doctors they're, they're dealing with it from a book sense, okay? And trust me, exactly. what's going on inside me, it ain't in none of them books that they're teaching you at school. <laughs> but they don't take it from us, you see? You know, they don't, they don't hear. Right. They, don't, they just don't take it from, from us. And so, yeah, I've had some, I've had some really uh, uh, interesting discussions with my doctors because... Um, when I go to express some things, well, number one, society does not, we live in a society that does not allow us to, um, to feel or express pain and pain, you, joy and pain. It's, it's a part of our lives. It really, really is. But start crying. And what are you told? Don't cry. Okay. Uh, suck it up. Get over it. It's going to be all right. You know, stop stressing. Okay. And so it's, it's not allowed. And then also, if you are unfortunate to suffer from uh, any kind of addiction. Okay. And I'm not just speaking about drugs because the definition of addiction is the habitual avoidance of uncomfortable feelings. So if you are also suffering from some form of addiction okay and you're in treatment for that along with your therapy everybody's telling you avoid slippery places people and places and things okay and again you're not allowed to deal with or address the pain or those issues 
And so I've actually gotten kicked out of some, some therapies in some groups <laughs> because when they sit up there and they say the, the definition of addiction is the avoidance of uh, the habitual avoidance of uncomfortable places, people, slippery things, whatever, okay? And they tell us to avoid slippery places, people, places, and things. Uh, um, so this is what my response to them. So you are creating addicts or you're not creating a, 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 a atmosphere that's conducive. So if we come in here and we talk about, wow, man, I'm really upset. Well, you know, uh, calm down. They'll teach us relaxation. They, they'll do anything but, but sit there and let us express and get it out, you know? Right. And, and um, I remember I used to um, get angry a lot. And I was told that I had an angry problem. And, and I would tell them, you know what, I'm actually angry at what's happened to me. And I don't think it's a problem. And I, I, I get even more angry when I'm able to talk about it. And I want to talk about it because I've learned that if I can get it out then it helps it it helps pass for me that's just for me right you know and right. so See, that's, you said something really good they're like we're not trying to say that post-traumatic stress disorder is a problem either mm -hmm. it is just a way of facing life after mm -hmm. damages mm -hmm. you have to you know it's not a problem it's just a change in your whole chemistry your whole dynamic mm -hmm. that you have to learn to live with place, embrace, um, and still be a whole person. It's not trying to say, oh, poor me or anything like that. As a matter of fact, it makes you stronger because you have to be whole. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware, and it makes your, your spiritual self more dominant yes. in your life. You put more faith in God. So it really is not like it's a problem. It's just something that we have to, you know, learn to live with and place in ourselves yes. on a regular basis. It's just, it's like a constant responsibility it's just like a child just a constant responsibility of protecting a child and protecting people even that's not a child outside of you you know just protecting the whole dynamic it's like a protection existence mm -hmm. making sure it don't get out of hand get out of control or do damage but it's not what i would call a problem mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. just a whole different arrangement of existing mm -hmm. um now we we know some of the ways that it affects veterans, but it not only affects the veterans; it can affect civilian people as well. Correct? Exactly. That's that's the most important thing to realize too. That's why I say I like the way you kind of diffuse problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, to some degree, it's a problem, but it's not the actual bottom line. It's just a different existence in life, mm -hmm. and people who who have different stages of it, different levels of it, they need to get in touch with it to realize they have to come up with a way of existing with it where they're a better person than they have chosen to be. Mm -hmm. And it all starts with an embrace. Embrace your whole self and then a lot of it just don't just be out of control. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like disciplining everything, being conscious of everything. Yeah. You know, it's a it's a great responsibility. That's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. It's a great responsibility, but you still can have a life. Yeah. You know, you still can love and be loved. But the whole problem is in society, we live in a society that's, that's inducing this, that's yes. brokenness, that's creating this. It's the whole foundation. Yes. It's, it's just wrong. <sighs> it's unnatural. It's un huh. inhuman. You know, like, like one of the problems, like when the soldiers come back from war, they, they it's not normal that man kill man and looking right at each other, dropping dead. Mm -hmm. That is not normal. Mm -hmm. And see, when you come back, because it's not normal, you know, it stays with you because it's against your nature, you know. And people being angry all the time and attacking each other is against the nature of our yeah. spiritual being. Yeah. So it's putting us in also a spiritual war zone. It's not just a physical war zone, and it's, an, it's a spiritual, it's emotional and mental war zone. That's why you, 
you have to be aware of yourself, what's controlling you all the time. You got to see, well, this is not going to just rule my day. Mm-hmm. You know, just like you have to take that time out and let it be known, like, no, you're not running this. I'm running this. You know, it's almost mm-hmm. like babysitting it's to a, a certain extent. It's a wonderful know? opportunity um, uh, to take responsibility for your behavior and basically right. control yourself. But exactly. um, but I, I think wow. it's important that people, civilian people, understand that uh, when they, they train us, they put us on command, then we come back and we get out and they just let us loose into the civilian population and they never debrief us. If you think about, they'll send... Uh, uh, they send the astronauts out to the moon or wherever they go, and when they come back, they get debriefed before they're right. allowed to go back with their families and transition back. You see, and and we never ever get that. Now on paper, um, right. on paper it says that we all get a some sort of psychological evaluation before we get out, but. What people don't know is that um, a president of the United States lo- a long time ago just automatically put a waiver on it, just rubber stamped it, so that we pass these 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 exams without even having to physically take them. And so this is how a lot of times you get police uh, uh, that have these disorders and stuff like that uh, uh, in in our police. If they got, if they took the test, they wouldn't pass. You see, they wouldn't be able to serve in the police forces, and 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 a, um, and a large uh, number of our of the world's police population are former military members. Okay, right. so so you got, and and then and you know what? <laughs> go ahead. When you said that in Cleveland, Akron, I mean no Akron, but in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm-hmm. It was these two people driving a car, mm-hmm. and it backfired. You know how you got one of them old cars? Yes. And this police thought that they were shooting at them, and so they, they a whole yep. bunch of police cars chased them. But the one guy, he stood on top of the hood of the car like he was going into a foxhole. Yep. And just shooting like crazy, just yep. shooting like crazy, like he was back in war. Yeah, and I said I bet you he he's been in war. He and got triggered. He got yeah. he got triggered, Flash, and right, and sounds right and light flashing and stuff like that. Sometimes that's the only they had a fraction of a fraction of a second to react to save not only their lives and stay alive, but the lives of of their their veterans around them, and their and right. their and their train and that training. It never le. I I was in the service thirty some odd years ago. Okay, and 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 I was trained in self defense and all this other kind of stuff. Okay, well, two or three years ago, I got into a situation where a man was breaking into my house. Big old man, six foot, four hundred pounds, something. Okay, and he kicked <laughs> my door in, and I had just had surgery. You know, I had a hysterectomy a couple of weeks prior. So here it is. I'm two weeks in, laying in pain, all that. But when they kicked my door in, I leaped up and I went running at him and he turned his back on me. So I did this sort of uh, uppercut from behind him and came up under his chin, up up under his chin and over his arm, uh, oh, you know, and I punched him at, in his ear and I broke his jaw like that wow. and i was shocked <laughs> when i but but what it was was that that reaction. training kicked in mm-hmm. reaction. And, and it really i mean i was shocked but it really really uh uh well at first i was like yeah i'm a bad man you want some more of this but my adrenaline was going <laughs> but um when i when i calmed down it kind of really it scared me because i was like if i'm out there out there in the world on a normal course or stuff, this is I can get really, really hurt, and this is why. Um, um, and they know it. This is why when um, when 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 the police show up and someone tells them they're a veteran, okay, this is why they come with SWAT gear and holding guns and arms against you and stuff like that. But 
um, and the police, I sometimes I feel sorry for them because the police were told to call the police, but the police are really only authorized to deal with three or four certain things. That's why most of the time they tell you, well, that's not a matter for that. You have to take it to court, family court, this and that. They're, they're, they're supposed to be peacekeepers. Okay, safety, public safety, safety. Okay, and so they are actually limited in what in what they can do. But we're told to call the police, and then the police come out in in certain situations that they're not authorized or equipped or trained to deal with. And then if you got somebody that's a veteran with some training behind them, and 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 in the police academies, they are actually teaching them and instilling in them military tactics. They're putting them on command. And they're sending them out in some dangerous situations, and these guys are afraid for their lives. Okay, and then number doing two, something abnormal. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And so it's uh, it, it's it it's a uh, yeah, it it's it's a lot. And so it's it's important to know. I mean, you have to wherever you go for your support. The people have to have a lot of compassion. And they have to have the the wherewithal to understand that, you know, we got to go deep to deal with this and, and right. to go there with us, not to prevent us. You know, don't tell us to stop crying. Don't tell us to suck it up. Don't tell us to take it like a man. Don't tell us to get over it, okay? You try getting over it. That's like if you got a cut on your leg and it was bleeding, look at your leg and say, stop bleeding, Okay? I'm just saying. Right. <laughs> you're saying right. <laughs> it's just so. It's very multiple, constantly. It can be so many things. That's mm-hmm. the thing about it. Mm-hmm. And like you say, it's not just soldier reaction to life. It's anybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody has some touch of reaction to stress and trauma. It's on the inside, the unseen aspect of ourselves mm-hmm. that that it takes place, and it has effect on how we communicate with each other. Yes. You know, and a lot of times people, that's why I say we need to come up with ways of, like you're saying, taking responsibility. And I think that's one of the biggest problems in society now. There's no accountability. There's no, you don't have to be responsible for your choices. You know, being aware of how powerful you are and what you say and do and how it affects other people. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing about having post-traumatic stress disorder, you take responsibility of protecting yourself and other people on the regular. Yes. Whereas people who don't acknowledge it, they're killing people, they're hurting people, they're doing it to themselves, they're just being very negative because mm-hmm. they're not owning the whole powerful aspect of themselves yeah. that's affecting everybody. Yeah, and they, and they and they they don't get there by themselves. See? Right. Uh, because again, they're, when it comes to expressing that pain and dealing with it, they're not allowed to. And we become conditioned because somehow, somehow we know that when we go in there and go talking about this, we have to be very, very careful about what we say because if we sound like we're going to hurt ourselves or somebody else or be a danger to ourselves or somebody else, then you get slammed up in a psych ward or you get arrested. You see? Exactly. And this is exactly. why education is really, 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 um, really Im- important because actually um, I kind of think that it, it, with the way that the world is going, I mean, you can't go to the movies without somebody getting shot up, okay? And even you, even the stuff goes on in the movies can be traumatic to you, okay? Exactly. Um, um, you can hardly go to church anymore without getting shot up and killed. At school, they've been shooting in the schools for, for years and in the malls. And so you have people from all ages, all walks of life, getting, um, getting, getting traumatized daily. And it's so common to experience a, a traumatic event. But it's, it never will be common to, to, you can't just tuck it away somewhere and, and, it, and it goes away. Because if you, the more traumas that you experience, um, the, the harder it's going to be. Uh huh. The more right. damage that it is. And it really it can't. Right. Go ahead. 
Oh, you go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say it really can be uh, um, um, uh, if if we're allowed to communicate it, okay, that that I think that's the the single most essential key to uh, being able to live and not die. Uh huh. Mm hmm. To live and see that's the, that that's what I like about what you're saying. And see, this is what I like. Like when I started writing my book, when I talk about that backpack, it's like when you go into that book, like this one guy. He he read my book. He said, this book personalizes me. It's taking me inside of myself. It's showing me myself the things that I said and done Mm -hmm. and didn't think nothing of. He said, but it means something to me now how I'm presenting myself to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, what vibration I'm sending off, being responsible for my space on earth that God has given me. And it was like he was a veteran and he was a drug addict. But I mean, about, it's been about maybe six months in. He has gotten him a job. Yeah. He has finally gotten him a home. He's off the street. Yeah. And he's going to rehab because he was able to actually unpack himself and yes. repack himself with something better and get rid of some things and catch some things. But reestablishing his base of his identity. See, that's the whole aspect because I know my strengths and weaknesses. I know my tendencies. You know, I don't look at myself to say that I'm this perfect person, that I don't mm-hmm. have any. Um, negative aspects of myself, but I know mm-hmm. how to handle those. Yes, you know, and do something with them to be positive instead of just destructive. Yes, and that's what I like about a lot of people with post-traumatic stress disorder. They do a lot of great things because they are determined to be their best self and to not let you know their individuality destroy them. Because that's basically what post-traumatic stress disorder is forcing your individu- individuality, your authenticity. Yes. It's like your unique presence with God because you have to be conscious of God to make it because it's unseen. God is unseen. Yeah. So you have to get in touch with that. And that's why you are elevated. You're elevated just because you have to <laughs> have that presence of God in your life. Yeah. And so that kind of like makes you more spiritual because you know that it's not so much around you that's more important. It's what's going on inside of you. Whereas most of you, the people in the world, they feel like everything around them is so great and so important. Mm-hmm. But having this disorder forces you to see that's not the reality of the reality of life. Wow. Yeah. You know, uh, you have to um, make sense out of things that don't make sense. Exactly. And, and sometimes, and sometimes, right. sometimes you can't do that. So I like the backpack because you... you you have to learn how to put it in some sort of perspective. Exactly. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Yep. If and you not think in- about it, though, it forces focus. People are not really focusing on themselves to the point where they identifying their power because they, they have power to destroy. They have power to build. But mm-hmm. most of the time, they only build for themselves. Mm-hmm. But people... That I've noticed with post-traumatic stress disorder, they are big-hearted people. Mm-hmm. They want people to be in a better state of existence. Mm-hmm. Not just them, they want other people, too, because they, I think in some ways we kind of realize that they, too, have a backpack. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to I know. For the I, I know. When I, <laughs> when I started in therapy, okay, when I started in therapy and I started uh, 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 realizing how much I was benefiting from it, but I also saw how much everybody else needs some therapy, too. <laughs> exactly, because I'm serious. It's like, it's almost, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say, there you go. <laughs> well. That's what my point is. It's like, it's like, to me, what I'm realizing is it's almost like a movement. Mm-hmm. It's like, since I've written this book, what I'm, there's so many people with it and when they talk they talk with such conviction such yeah. empowerment you know such spirituality and such a need to make a difference with mankind to get them on the path of peace and love and joy and happiness mm-hmm. it's like that's more important to them than acquiring wealth and material things mm-hmm. so it's like you're creating this 
this movement where everybody's coming together and supporting each other and strengthening each other yes. and showing that, hey, look, we people too. We are normal. Yeah. And we have something to offer and give, you know. Yeah. So it's really kind of dynamic. I think that you've done a great job uh, with that book. And I don't know if you're familiar with the movie The Invisible War. Military sexual no, trauma. No, I haven't heard of that one. Yep, yeah, it's a it's a documentary about military military sexual trauma, and I I'm in it, um, and several other uh, w veterans came forward, and uh, oh. uh, Academy Award nominated uh, uh, director Kirby Dick um, um, did the movie, and. Um, and they did. Uh, uh, they followed. They followed us. Actually, they were. Um, they they learned of uh, the advocate Susan Avila Smith, and she was working on behalf of uh, post traumatic stress disorder and, and military sexual trauma. And she's helped a lot of veterans. And so they were actually going to do a story about her, and then it and then it grew. And so we did a lot of advocating. Uh, uh, and um, we were that movie was used to bring awareness uh, to Congress about military sexual trauma and because of that movie now they're um, taking steps in the military to hold the military accountable um, for, for that a lot of times um, when with the perpetrators and it's not just sexual trauma but probably any crime they cover it up they they don't arrest the uh the perpetrators unless they have to but with uh, mst military sexual trauma they were if the woman that got raped was married then she would get court-martialed for adultery rather than pursue the perpetrator sometimes and so we had to do a lot of fighting just so that we could even get help and the treatment and everything that came along with that and so um that's going to go uh that's i always recommend people to watch that movie and it's available on netflix too um wow, but i definitely got to check that out yeah the invisible war and then also uh on my recommended reading i'm going to be recommending uh your book too so <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, it's really nice to see how it's becoming more of a conscious reality. Because mm -hmm. you know, like anything, once it becomes a conscious reality, it's like it diffuses the negativity about it, you know. Yeah. It's the silence that kicks things with power. But once you start sharing and, you know, making it just be a norm, yes. it just makes such a huge difference in releasing a lot of that stress. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just being able to talk about it, just like people can talk about cancer and, you know, heart attacks and strokes and, you know, yeah. broken legs and different things like that. Just just make it a normal reality, you know, without trying to put knives in it. Just let it be nice. Let it be kind, you know, mm -hmm. instead of so negative because it don't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. It really, it really doesn't. So, um... How could someone get a hold of you? If somebody actually wanted to reach me, if they go to my email, which is universal love with one L twenty six at yahoo dot com, I would definitely respond to their emails, and um, they can catch me on Facebook also, mm -hmm. Linda Diane Watley, you know, Facebook. So I'll be more than glad to communicate with people. I just don't just pass out my phone number. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's okay. And if if um, if if someone was in trouble or really distressed right now, uh, what would you recommend for them? First, I would just you know make me somebody that they could just actually feel like and relate to them. If they don't have that, then I would just just be still. Mm -hmm. You could just be still. Mm -hmm. and breathe I mean really because it's like time has to go by that's just the, really the key mm -hmm. it's like letting it pass you know mm -hmm. if you could just be still you know and then you know the thing about that too is you have to create 
a circle. You have to have somebody that you can really talk to. Mm-hmm. Just talk to. Yeah. You know, a just st- important. A strong support, if, a strong support right. network. Yes. But the mm-hmm. first thing is like if you could just be still and just look at it. That's, that's what I do in my book. I explain how you can just actually look at it. Mm-hmm. Become the conscious observer of the feelings, of the emotions, and the thoughts. When you become the observer, then you have a choice of how far it's going to go to a certain point. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, of course, but basically at least you can guide it or steer it or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But it takes to have the dynamics of being able to explain how to go inside of yourself and see it. Mm -hmm. Just how we can see it outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm reading my books, you know, it teaches you or guides you something about it. it. It shows you how you can see it actually see and interpret your feelings and your thoughts in combination mm-hmm. you know like when you're an author like the way you can just from out of unseen pull in words to put down on paper to formulate a whole book that's a process from going from the invisible to the physical so like it's a process when you learn how to take your inner energy your spirit your emotions and your mental part of yourself when you understand that language that those different dimensions and you can talk to them and you can look at them and you know kind of calm your own self down on the inside you just learn to do that yeah you know, just like you learn to take care of your body you learn to take care of that part of yourself because you can you can see the rare up you know the flaring you know mm-hmm. sometimes it's real real overbearing but then you're aware of it see mm-hmm. you realize that this is happening and then you start learning how to see it in a way where you can stroke it or embrace it or mm-hmm. let it know that you, you know this is us we're in this together you're not by yourself it's like you start seeing it and you start like I say embracing it it's just a unique experience but like I say I have the feedback that I'm getting from my book is just confirming what I'm trying to explain yes. that you just learned the language of it I think that's the best way to explain it when yes. you understand just like people become mechanics they learn how to understand that motor when you become a physician you learn how to understand that body on the inside as well on the outside so like what my book does it takes you on the inside and teach you how to function in there mm-hmm. you know like like I say the first thing you want to do is be still so mm-hmm. you can turn your vision into the in- energy and emotions and learn how to you know move it around a little bit yeah that's Im- important because it has i i i in 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 my my mind it seems to have its its own kind of rhythm there's no rhyme right, or reason right. to it but there's a, a rhythm and and being still is um is the most effective tool that i have I've been told that um, um, because some people look at it and and as me being still, they they tell me that I'm isolating, and they say that that's not good. But I look at it as when I be still, then I'm not going to uh, uh, hurt myself. I'm not going to hurt else. anyone else. Um, um, Sometimes because there have been times that I've been um, out you know out at the store for example and I'm I'm grocery shopping and then I can uh, just kinda go somewhere you know in my head and then I'm, I'm spending money that I normally don't spend you know I, I'm, I'm making decisions that I normally don't 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 do and stuff like that and it, it, it when I'm like that I can become suggestible you see, right. and reactive, reactive, highly reactive to everything going on around me. But I found that, like you say, you sit still because number one, remember that it passes, it will pass. So while you're sitting still, that gives you, it gives you the space and the place that you can actually be aware of your feelings and what's going on inside you without all the other sti- having to deal with any outside stimulation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. 
You you know I, you got some good stuff there. I like this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that about that. I was like, okay, we don't see it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a journey, you know. Mm-hmm. It's a journey. It's, it's so so it. soldier with a backpack, living and dying simultaneously. Where can we get the book? The easiest place to get it is on Amazon. They have it at Barnes and Noble. Uh-huh. And I also have my website where I have a listing of other links that carry my book. Like if you go to www.lindadianewatley.com mm-hmm. or lindadianewatley one dot com, you'll see a listing where if you want to get it on iTunes, I think it is, and different other links that carry my book, you can go to my website to get it there also. Okay. All right. But wow. it's exciting when you can share, and it's nothing like when somebody gets it. It just really empowers you, too. That's why I say I love this, this journey, because mm-hmm. I just feel it's coming together, creating this um, powerful, invisible quilt. Like, mm-hmm. every time I connect with somebody, it's connecting us, making us stronger and more empowered, mm-hmm. you know, and just more spiritual and loving. It's just it's a movement to me. Yes. That's the way I see it because it's just, it's amazing how, you know, you don't even have to meet a person, but yet you know that you share something in common and it's just strengthening. Yeah. It's very strengthening. So, um, what are your upcoming plans? Anything? Well, basically right now, I'm just basically doing interviews and Hopefully, I'm hoping to um, do more engagements where I go out to speak to people and interact, you know. Yes. But I'm just, like, I'm just getting myself grounded right now. So I really enjoy my interviews and my blogging and, you know, yes. just communicating with people in emails. And, and my biggest hope is to be able to go out among them. I call it Boots on the Ground, where we interact together. I hope to have workshops and things like that and, Mm -hmm. you know, go out there, not just with the veterans, but with anybody that's been visited with post-traumatic stress disorder. I just want to just share my spirit and I want them to share their spirit with me and just that alone is just going to make a difference, you Mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Be among us. That's what I want to do, be among them and be among us. That's just a beautiful thing. Like you say, two or three gather in my name. I mean, it's power. It's power there. Yes. Know? Yeah. And, and you know, so a lot of times, again, we're not allowed to express it. But I always like to take it back to the word, for we overcome by the words of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, Linda, it's been <laughs> it's been really awesome talking with you. I'm very grateful to you for uh, writing the book and coming on the air and talking about it. I had a, a really great time. It, it touches me personally, I must say. And so I hope that uh, uh, we I would like to have you back on uh, uh, soon. <laughs> Because no, all you have to do is just let me know. It would be a pleasure to me as well. Okay. All right. Nothing like Sharon. Just yeah. Can't beat it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's important, and we don't have a lot of outlets where we can really be open and free like this, and that it's, that it's you know, it's okay, you know. And so, yeah. Well, thank you so much. It's been great uh, being with you on this, on this Vibes Live exclusive. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode, everyone. And we will see you next time. Thank you, Linda. Thank you.